Hey, everybody's on finance. I'm Dr. Aaron Newfeld, co-founder and host of the video and podcast series. Today, we have Dr. Richard Zimblist on our program. He's an expert on SEO, website design, and social media marketing. He's going to give us some insights on all three of those topics. Additionally, Dr. Zimblis is a VA doctor. So enjoy the program. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and also to our podcast. And check out the website, odysonfinance.com, updated nearly every day. That event. All right. So I'm with Richard Zimblis. I'm going to give him an introduction in just a little bit. First thing, for people that are logging on, Make sure to check out the website. We have updated it. I think there's three new blogs since our last live event, which was last week. Uh, also, make sure to check out the YouTube channel and the podcast. Um, we're updated up till Collins. We're working on getting his video updated and also his podcast uploaded as well. So definitely take a look at that podcast. All you need to do is go onto the Apple app and just subscribe to the podcast and YouTube. Go onto the channel and subscribe to that. And other than that, uh, if you need to refi your loans, everything is updated on the refi page. So uh, rates have continually gone down, which is awesome if you're looking to refi your loans. So just go on odysonfinance.com and take a look at that. I'm sure there's something I'm missing, uh, and, but that will post an update on that as well. So let's go ahead and get started today with today's program. Uh, so I have Richard Zimblis, uh with me today, and I'm just going to read his biography real quick so we can all get acquainted with him. Uh, he received his optometry degree from the Pennsylvania College of Optometry in 2008 and completed a residency in ocular disease at the Baltimore VA Medical Center. He went on to obtain fellowship from the American Academy of Optometry in 2012 and became board certified in medical optometry in 2017. Dr. Zimplis is on staff at the Harry S. Truman Memorial Veterans Hospital in Columbia, Missouri. He holds clinical adjunct appointments at the University of Missouri St. Louis College of Optometry and Southern College of Optometry, my alma mater. Great. In addition to his clinical responsibilities, Dr. Zimblis has authored multiple journal articles and lectured for national meetings. He also serves as a reviewer for COPE, a peer reviewed, a peer reviewer for a major ophthalmic uh, journal, vice president of the American Board of Certification in Medical Optometry, ABCMOA and is actively involved with teleretinal imaging and virtual medicine in his facility and region. Oh, I might have to do another live event on that someday in the future. <laughs> his clinical interests include retinal disease, systemic disease, and neuro-ophthalmology. Uh, in his free time, Dr. Zimlis enjoys staying active with weightlifting, golf, racquetball, and rooting on the Missouri Tigers. He is also the founder and CEO of COMA, COMO, Como Web Designs, and Ignite Medical, which specializes in search engine optimization, digital marketing, and website design. And those are the three things we're going to talk about today. So Richard, if you just want to give a quick intro on how, how do you get involved in uh, SEO and website development, uh, coming from the VA and going into that? Well, so I, I designed the entire website for the VA system. No, no I'm just messing around about that. <laughs> not true. No, so what's actually happened is it's kind of an interesting story. Uh, I started with website stuff about eight or nine years ago. It just kind of happened on just kind of really on chance, uh, we had a student that was in our facility and he was looking at optometry schools and he started looking at all these different facilities and all these different programs throughout the country. He got accepted to UAB down in Alabama and we started looking at how much he was actually going to owe in terms of like loans afterwards. So for like an out-of-state student, he was going to be something like $300,000 in, in debt just from optometry school alone. And at that point, I had already started on some... Uh, I started doing some website stuff on the side, just trying to like educate people about the different types of optometry programs out there, different types of practices and so forth. And what I did actually did was I composed this huge graph about all the different optometry schools and the uh, different loans that you would essentially be responsible for, for all the different in-state and out-of-state. And that whole thing really took off beyond belief and it was featured in different optometry journals online and, and, and print. Mm -hmm. So that was really kind of my first big experience with websites and, and so forth. And from there, it just really kind of blossomed into a kind of doing it on the side hustle, just trying to make some little extra money on the side and having fun with it to me effect, officially incorporating and becoming an LLC a few years back. And it becoming just a very successful business that I've been uh, proud to be part of. Great, great. Yeah. And what is SEO exactly? Just go through a kind of a general overview of that for people that are unfamiliar with it or yeah certainly so seo stands for search engine optimization and anytime you talk about websites or google bing yahoo you're talking about seo 
uh, essentially what you're doing with SEO is you're trying to get your website ranked as high as possible on the search results. So people always say, you know, if you're not first, you're last. Or I guess that's one of my favorite comments rather from Talladega Nights with Ricky Bobby. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Great movie. Great movie, yeah. <laughs> so anyways, you know, there's a, an expression that I use where if you're not first, you're last. And the, mm -hmm. it really uh, is encompassing with website design, SEO, and so forth. Uh, basically, when people go onto Google or Bing or Yahoo, they are not going to go through the second or the third page very often. They're going to look on the first page of the search results to see what the best answers are. And frankly, if your search engine results aren't on that first page, people aren't going to usually click on your website. So what we do with SEO or search engine optimization is we put different keywords in the uh, websites and so forth to help your practice and to help your uh, search engine rankings climb the ranks and get as high as possible on there so you can get some more clicks and website traffic. Okay, great. And so what's important for your website and for marketing your website? Uh, what are some things to put into your website if you're doing it you know, DIY or even if you have a, a third party running your website, what are some good things to look for? So the, the big things to do for your website and the one mistake that I see all the time is the lack of something called a CTA or a call to action button. What you need to have on your website is a big button that says request appointment online, or, call us now, something that really gets the user's attention. Because when people go to your website, you want something to really stand out to make the user take a specific action to actually have them accomplish something. You know, I see a lot of websites where I'm consulted on and it's a nice little design, but there's really not a lot to it. And things are very kind of bland. You want to have a lot of things that stand out that really can direct the user to accomplish one particular action. And the best example for this is to actually have a schedule online, whether it be scheduling with, you know, software like Revolution or whatever the case is, you know, anytime that someone can actually take an action on your website, it's going to reduce the load in your actual clinic. So your receptionists don't have to answer the phone and so forth. And it's going to be an automatic patient without you having to lift a finger, which is always really nice. Um, so certainly one of those things is the best to really have on there is a nice call to action button. Uh, I like to really have them in the headers of the website to make sure they're very visible and very obvious. It's also nice to sprinkle them throughout your homepage as well, different parts. That way, if someone's scrolling down to find, oh, about your, your clinic or um, testimonials, you still have other opportunities to actually hit that call to action button uh, throughout their web process. Um, so those, that's the big thing for CTA buttons. One of the big things in terms of most websites for optometry and for really any kind of medical practice is the colors as well. You know, oftentimes when you go to a medical website, they'll have a variation of a blue or a green color. And that's on purpose. You know, you, people do a lot of research on different colors and how it makes people feel in terms of emotions and so forth. That's why you don't see a lot of medical websites with red or orange because they're very mm -hmm. intense, bold colors. Um, the blues and the greens have a much more calming effect on people. They'll be a lot more trustworthy for your organization. And by no means am I saying, you know, go out and change all your colors tomorrow because you have a purple or, you know, orange, whatever the case right, is. Right. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, just give that some thought when you're creating your logos for your website and for actually designing your website in itself, too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And on the front page, I mean, that's where most people are going to land on, just going off of uh, the same question here. Mm -hmm. What are the most important things to put on that front page? Uh, some people think a video is really important. Some people think a picture slideshow is important. Some people think it's, you know, the CTA is like just putting those all. What do you think? So obviously, I'm big into CTAs. <clears throat> I think the videos look great and they're really nice if they're done well. Um, the big problem about any kind of video though, is that you're going to typically host it on your server. If you're not, then you're going to, and if you do host it on your server, those videos are going to eat up a lot of real estate and they're eating up a lot of server time. So one thing, and we'll, you know, we can talk about this in a moment as well, but you know, in terms of getting your website to rank higher and so forth, one of the things that Google always looks at is something called your time to first bite. And if you have a lot of things loading on your website, like a lot of heavy images, a lot of videos, a lot of different fonts and so forth, it's going to take a longer time for your video to load and for your website to load. So your website score is going to actually go down and you may actually suffer some Google search results rankings because of it. Um, so that's just one little, I kind of went off track a little bit, but <laughs> no, that's, that's good knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Anyway, so yeah, videos, videos are great if they're done well. Um, just mm -hmm. keep them short. You don't need anything crazy long or very fancy. 
Um, right. So videos are great. I'm personally a big fan of, you know, maybe two or three pictures that kind of rotate in a slide carousel. Um, mm-hmm. one, one really useful hint when you have those slide carousels and any kind of big pictures is use some sort of image compression software. There's a really good one online called Tiny PNG, where if you have any kind of okay. high resolution picture, you throw it right in there and it'll compress it significantly. So that can help you a lot with your uh, loading time. Okay. Um, but, you know, otherwise, too, when you have your homepage, you want to have, you know, I think it's this, the research says like there's five or 10 seconds where someone's going to actually make up your mind and determine what your website's about. So you want to have your website be very clear and concise from the beginning, what your practice is about, what your missions are, and be very upfront with people. Um, besides that, you know, I like to always have a little about us page on there, uh, just a little introduction to these are the doctors. Mm-hmm. It's always really nice to have a few testimonials. Uh, obviously, either make sure you get consent from your patients or keep their names, you know, um, don't spell their names out officially on there to right. yeah. mm-hmm. their violations and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, those are the really big things. Um, so, yeah, testimonials, you know, a lot of links on your website are good because that's going to help mm-hmm. link to other pages on there and so forth as well. Yeah. And going off the testimonials, what's your opinion on, you know, putting a link to like Yelp reviews or having that built into your website? So I I think it's good. Um, You know, a Mm -hmm. lot of people try to stay away from Yelp because of obvious reasons. And that's a Mm -hmm. whole podcast in itself. Oh, yeah. Um, But, you know, I really like transparency. And I think if Mm -hmm. you're doing reviews done what done right. You know, there's a lot of great revolu- uh, There's a lot of great software out there that can help you get reviews for Yelp, for Google, for Facebook, and so forth. So having those on your website and having the direct links, it'll actually help your SEO a little bit, and it'll also help kind of gain more trust in your patient base too. You know, if you're trying to hide something, that's going to be a little bit more fishy from my perspective. Makes sense. Yeah. And in, any other techniques uh, an individual can use to improve their website? Anything you can think of off the top of your head? So, you know, you, you kind of mentioned DIY stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really, really anti DIY. Mm-hmm. And it's not just because I run a business and I'm trying to take money from people. That, you know, it's not just mm-hmm. that. Um, but frankly, you know, I, I've talked to probably 30 or 40 different optometrists throughout the country over the past six months alone. And part of what I do is I always offer like a complimentary um, keyword analysis to see mm-hmm. where your site currently what, uh, ranks and so forth. And virtually every single time I get a site that was done in Squarespace or Wix or some sort of do-it-yourself page builder, their rankings are atrocious. Um, You know, typically they'll rank really well for branded keywords. So if it's, you know, Smith's Eye Care, yeah, they'll rank really well for that. Right. But anything like Eye Doctor in Columbia, Missouri or Optometrist, Columbia, Missouri, their websites tend to do horrific on Um. And that's even with a lot of people kind of pay extra for the Squarespace SEO components or the Wix SEO because they have extra plans where you can actually purchase that. Mm-hmm. Frankly, it's never made any difference from all the stuff that I've seen. Okay. So, you know, that, that's my, that's really my kind of um, my soap, soapbox thing. Yeah, yeah. I would really stay away from the DIY builders. Okay. Um, there are, so the, the main programs that I use called WordPress, which is one of the biggest ones out there. Mm-hmm. And, WordPress has, it's kind of a sleep, steep slope to kind of get started on it. It takes a little bit of learning how to kind of work in the back end, but there are actually a lot of different page builders that you can use inside of WordPress itself, which are much, much better for your website. And these are ones that you can easily learn to do on your own as well. So, you know, if, if I were to make any recommendation, I would say move away from Wix, move away from Squarespace and get yourself a page builder inside of WordPress and learn how to do it there where you can put the right, what they call meta tags in to ensure that the important keywords that you have on your website are showing up for the search engines. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we actually work, use WordPress for Odie's on finance. And yeah, definitely a learning curve, but a lot of good things you can do and a lot of add-ons you can use that are that make the website look a lot better and a lot more interactive. So yeah, I definitely agree with you on that one. And uh, what are some must-haves uh, when it comes to website design? Uh, I know we talked, we just talked about WordPress. Uh, any add-ons or widgets or anything like that? that once again, I know, DIY, not the best thing, but if someone is DIYing it, yeah. Yeah, so when it comes to your website, um, obviously CTA, first and foremost, I'm not going to talk about that enough. That's one Mm -hmm. big thing that you need to have on your website. Um, The only thing that you can really do is have an FAQ page or an FAQ section for different questions your patient may be asking. 
You know, it could be something as simple as what are your fees for contact lens exams or what insurances do you take? Uh, little things like that where your patients are consistently asking your front desk certain questions. You can include those on your website as well. Um, one of the big things that's really come out in the past three or four years, I can't remember the exact date, is uh, Google has gone to a mobile friendly or mobile first indexing, which is incredibly important for anyone's website. And what they're essentially alluding to with this is that if your website is not mobile responsive and it doesn't look good on an iPad or a, a Samsung tablet or iPhone, Android, whatever the case is, any kind of mobile device, if it's not responsive and it look appropriate on there, then you're actually going to suffer significant uh, results in your rankings. So you have to absolutely make sure that your site is mobile friendly. Um, a quick, easy test that you can do is if you just even go onto the search engine and type in mobile friendly test, put your website right in there and it'll tell you if it's mobile friendly or not. Okay. Um, so that's certainly a big one there. Uh, every website needs to have an SSL, uh, so, uh, secure socket link. Very, okay. very important. Uh, search engines are actually starting to dock websites that do not have that. So one thing I actually have encountered on several occasions too are different hosting companies. Um, we'll say ones that maybe have Danica Patrick as a spokesperson. I'm not going to mention <laughs> any names here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. But different ones actually really nickel and dime a lot of their users for different things. Like the, mm -hmm. the charge for an SSL might be 15 or 20 bucks a month or something along those lines. If you get a really good host, you know, you do not have to pay a lot by any means. A good host is going to have uh, SSL for free. Okay. company like let's encrypt so there's there's a lot of really good options to get a free ssl if you're with a company that you have to pay extra for so you know don't uh, don't undervalue the size of an ssl and how that's really important for you um other things would be analytics like google analytics and so forth mm -hmm. that's a really important component for your website too because uh what can happen is that you may let, let's say you hire a company to do search engine optimization for them. they may do a great job in getting your rankings up really high but if your website isn't properly optimized and it's not directing the uh, the user to go a certain direction, then you may get all these hits to the main page, but then you're not going to get other ones to your about us page or your FAQ page or meet the team, your diseases that you have listed. So the reason you can actually use analytics is you can look at something called behavioral flow, where you can actually see where a, someone logged onto your website and then what actions they took thereafter to see how they can improve things. And this is really important because if you can have people coming to your website, you've made the first crucial step. You got them to click on your site from the search rankings. That's the hardest part because right. there's so yeah. many other options out there. Once you have them on their site, the rest is just pure gravy. From there, you just got to teach them where they need to go. And, you know, you can use that. So you can use the analytics to actually kind of get them in the right spot and to make sure that your patterns are following the right funnels and so forth. So that's a really big thing. Okay. Um, Going back to the hosting also, just for a second, too, I really don't want to skip over that to an extent because mm -hmm. good hosting can really make or break your website a, a lot. Uh, usually somebody, when they kind of go onto your website, if it doesn't load in three or four seconds, oftentimes the user is going to back out and they're going to find something else. So you're, you, you really have three or four seconds to make your first uh, impression on somebody. Um, when I first started doing uh, websites, we were building a test website for a organization that I was working with, and we were just using dirt, dirt cheap hosting, the cheapest one we can possibly find just to kind of test it out and so forth. Mm. And when we actually built the website, it took 15 or 20 seconds to load. Oh, I mean, that's, yeah, that's astronomical. Yeah. We didn't have a lot of photos. We didn't have anything crazy going on. It was just basically us throwing the information on there. But that's how bad the servers were and how slow they were. Okay. When we switched to another company that's very, very well known um, throughout the web hosting community, we were loading that thing in two to three seconds. So just transferring to a better host and paying an extra dollar or two more per month made a tremendous difference in the website uh, hosting speed and so forth. So, you know, if you're with a cheap host, I would strongly recommend get something better because it can help your search engine rankings and your actual user ability as well. Okay. And yeah, we do have a lot of uh, cold start optometrists on ODs on finance. Are, are there any recommendations for specific web hosts uh, that you'd point them to if they're just trying to start a website? Yeah. So, you know, my two ones that I like to go to are SiteGround. And uh, I, I recently switched a lot of mine over to a company called Name Hero, uh, which, okay. which is great. 
So SiteGround, um, they're typically, if you look at any kind of web hosting forums online, they're always going to be mentioned. They tend to have just stellar support. Uh, the one thing I'm not a big fan of is that they'll give you great pricing for two or three years, whatever the case is. And then they double or triple the pricing after that. And they're not very flexible in terms of uh, renegotiating the, the price again. Okay. So, you know, so, you know, you're not talking about a huge amount of money at this point. But at the same time, if you can spend three dollars a month versus twenty five dollars a month, it's, it's you know, sizable yeah. over time. Yeah, it adds up. Yeah. Um, so I, I end up switching a lot of mine over to that name hero company and they've mm -hmm. been great. Um, their support has definitely rivaled SiteGround. Their servers are just as fast. They have something called uh, Lightspeed on there, which is a great server. So uh, I've been extremely happy with them since I've switched a lot of mine over to them. Okay, great. And then let's switch gears a little bit from websites to social media. Uh, so social media has become huge. Uh, advertising on social media is immensely valuable with targeting and all of that. So uh, what mediums stand out as best for you in terms of ECP marketing, uh, with Facebook, Instagram, or even Snapchat, TikTok? Sure. So I can definitely say I've never done anything on TikTok. That's uh, way beyond my... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, yeah, I really... I'm going to throw a kind of a boat in there and say it depends. Mm -hmm. and, okay. and the reason I say that is it very much depends on your patient base. If you're in a geriatric population, then, you know, how much are you going to really get out of social media? Mm -hmm. Probably not much. You know, if you're dealing with people between their 30s to 60s, I would definitely recommend Facebook as the primary uh, social media outlook. Uh, if you're dealing with a lot of more Gen Xers and millennials, then Instagram certainly a great way to go, too. Um, the good thing about Facebook and Instagram is that they work very well together. So you can run ads concurrently on both of the, the softwares, uh, the programs. Um, but they work, they work pretty well overall. Um, the one thing I will caution people about with any kind of social media ads is that they have a very low uh, CTR or click-through rate. So if you talk about like Google ads or what they used to call Google AdWords, the mm -hmm. click-through rates are much lower for something like Facebook and Instagram than they are for uh, actual Google ads. So the, the benefit though, is that you're actually getting a lot cheaper um, or a lot less expensive mm -hmm ads for social media than you typically are for Google. So it's really a catch 22. You know, you're you probably spend less money on your Facebook and Instagram ads, but you're also going to have a lower ROI for it in general too, because you're not going to have as many people clicking on them. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. And when I, I remember when I first took over my practice and took over the website, uh, our hosts, talked a lot about blogging. Uh, they sent me an email. They said, hey, you got to blog consistently to gain traction on your website to make your website show up in searches. How, how important is blogging uh, and writing articles and keeping everything up to date on your website? Let's just say they were not lying to you about that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, it's crucial. Um, okay. And that, that's actually been the foundation of my entire company and why I've been so successful um, in doing what we've been doing. So just kind of a quick background. What happens is that when you develop a website, you so you make John Smith's optometry office dot com, mm -hmm. whatever it is. you create a website and you have all these static pages. So you have a page for your optical, you have a page for eye diseases, uh, for your about us and so forth. You know, that's all great. And you'll get some rankings up in there for that. Now, what happens is that Google and all these other search engines send out these things called crawlers. So they go to your website every few weeks, every few months, depending on how busy your website is. And it's going to uh, report back saying, hey, have they updated their website at all? Or is it, is it the exact same thing that it was six months ago? So what Google and all these other search engines like to do are see websites that are very dynamic, that they're consistently adding information, they're adding data, they're changing things up. And that's where things are really beneficial from a blogging perspective. So a blog in general, it can actually really help make your website a lot better in the search rankings because you'll rank for higher terms, not just, you know, eye doctor in Columbia, Missouri, but if someone types in macular degeneration, glaucoma, Mac, uh, Missouri, all these different possible search terms that you can imagine, those are going to come up and you'll be ranked much, much higher than anybody else in your area. So, okay. you know, what I typically do in all my blogs is I'll write, um, you know, we write typically around 500 to 1,000 words. Um, usually 1,000 is considered the, the gold standard, but I've gotten, honestly, very good results for five to 600 even in a lot of them. So what you do is you write a blog about five to 600 words. In the blog itself, 
it's really important to not just write the content, but to also use what they call meta tags. And if you're using something like WordPress, what you can do is highlight certain words. Like if you're typing about uh, macular degeneration, you can make a little subtitle dry AMD versus wet AMD, and then make that a, what they call a heading two or a heading three. This puts something on your website called the meta tag that sends it back to Google and says, hey, this is about macular degeneration. And they've actually organized the website properly to tell you these are the subtitles and this is the information that you need. So, you know, having a blog by itself is great, but also optimizing it properly for SEO is crucial if you're going to do that. Um, okay. And the other thing I kind of do at the end of the blogs too is I write a little little spiel like, you know, Dr. John Smith cares about your family eye care, you know, and then I kind of put again what the topics are in the conversation or in the uh, blog post and then say, you know, we're located in Columbia, Missouri. So mm -hmm. having those even terms about where you're located, um, a link to schedule online, those are all little things that you can do in your blogs that will help people not only schedule online easier and faster, but will also help your search rankings because you're going to get higher and higher for stuff like the local um, for the name, address and phone number, mm -hmm. which is really, really important for any kind of local SEO that you do. OK. And how often should someone be blogging? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, very, very often is there is, mm -hmm. the you know, if you look at any of the big corporations that do professional SEO stuff on a worldwide basis, Companies like Bright Local, Moz, uh, Hoth, the thing it's called, H-O-T-H. They have all these people have different ports to say two to three times a week is what you want to be doing for your blogging. Okay. That's absurd. You know, nobody in our, in our line has time for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, typically what I do is I do uh, a blog every two weeks for companies. And mm -hmm. we've had spectacular results with that alone. Um, okay. And the reason we even started doing that is a lot of the other companies that you see um, that do SEO for optometry and for other medical organizations, they tend to do one blog about every month or so. So mm -hmm. I figured, hey, if we double it, we'll get twice the good results. And honestly, it's worked very well for us. It's worked good. Good. Yeah. All right. And one other thing that we were reading about that and I obviously do a lot of blogging on ODS on finance and uh, we're reading some of the there's a few subreddits on um on marketing and all of that. One of the big things they talk about is uh, the new thing is graphics, uh, having infographics or just having good graphics that keep someone on your page, whereas a wall of text will get someone to you know jump yeah. off your page right away. Uh, what are your opinions on that? Oh, I, I agree 100%. Um, anything that's going to uh, really kind of engage the user, whether it be a video or a picture, something that kind of redirects them from just that wall of text is mm -hmm. going to be great. Um, and this kind of goes back to almost the analytics that we were talking about as well. When people go onto a website, um, they will look at the text and they're going to skim it. They're not going to actually read through very carefully because people are just, people are lazy by nature. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where it's really helpful to have all these subheadings too, where if you're talking about macular degeneration, you can have one subheading that says dry AMD, one wet AMD. So that way, if someone's coming to your website, they know exactly what they're looking for and they can actually find the location and kind of read that part in more detail. So, but putting photos in your website are great and it, anything to really kind of keep the person on there. Um, the reason I mentioned the analytics is that when people go into your website, what Google does is it actually tracks how long they're on each page for, what pages they went to after clicking on your single page and so forth. So anytime somebody actually goes to your website and they leave within 20 seconds, that's going to be a what they call a bounce rate. And that's going to be pretty bad for your website. So you want to have people stay on there, whether it be through the use of watching videos or having an infographic where they have to kind of manipulate down funnels and so forth. That's going to be very beneficial for you. OK. Overall. All right. And let's jump to advertising a little bit. Uh, can you give some good pointers on Google ads and social media ads and what to do, what not to do. Yeah, certainly. So the one big thing that I have seen with uh, different organizations for ads, especially for Google ads, is people, they ultimately try to do it themselves first because they want to save money. They don't want to spend X number of dollars per month with a marketing agency, which is, you know, that's great. I'm fine. I get it. Hmm. Now, the big mistake that I've seen countless times over and over is they use, they don't use any kind of geographical radi uh, radius for their location. So it might be John Smith's Eye Care in Columbia, Missouri, but and they have this great ad that's all set up. 
but they're not targeting people in Columbia, Missouri. They're targeting people across the entire nation. So anytime anyone targets or writes in Google, John Smith, I care. People in California, people in Jersey, Florida, they're all mm -hmm. going up to the website and clicking on it. You don't want any of those people because they're never coming to your practice. You know, you're, you're just throwing money down the drain. So the biggest thing that I can tell anybody that's using Google ads is to make sure you have a radius set for your ad, uh, ad group in particular. If you're living in a, a rural area, you know, make it 20 or 30 miles, something that's realistic for your practice. Mm -hmm. If you're in a city, you know, if you're in New York City, you can make it as short as a half mile because you're not going to get traffic from three miles away. That's just not the way it right. works. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a huge, huge one. Um, the other thing that people kind of tend to do uh, mistakenly is they use different match phrases. So with Google ads, there's what they call broad match, phrase match and exact match. And what people tend to do initially is they use a broad match. So if someone puts in eyeglasses, then they're going to be competing with companies like Zenni Optical, Warby Parker. They're going to be competing with all these other people to try to get ads. And that's not what you want. You want to have very specific ads in your, or excuse me, specific um, phrases in your ads. So, mm -hmm. you know, I would always recommend you using e either the phrase match as the bare minimum, or the other thing is you can use exact match, where if you want to type in eye doctor near me or eye exam near me, you, you can have those very, very specific criteria in those words. And those are the only ones that you'll come around for. So between having different combinations like that and a shorter radius, you'll have a much higher click through rate on your websites and you'll have higher conversions as well. Um, so the one thing I would tell you, too, about the phrase match, and I've used this before, I kind of I, when I do mine, I do a combination of both to kind of get an idea of what is working for an individual location. But what I'll typically do is start out with a phrase match and there when you pull up your Google ads campaign, it'll show you all the different things that people are typing in for the search queries and they're bringing you to your ads. So let's say you're putting, um, you know, eye doctor Columbia, Missouri again, because of the word eye doctor, the phrase match may actually find uh, Walmart eye doctor, America's best eye doctor. It may pull up all these different mm -hmm. things, even though you're a private practice. So as you're going through your phrase matches, this can actually, you can actually kind of put a negative term to these. So if you say, uh, if you see Walmart eye doctor, America's best eye doctor coming up recurrently, you can click a button that says, no, I don't want to see any kind of ads or I don't want to produce any ads that have these kind of, these kind of uh, search criteria. Okay. Um, yeah. so that's just one way to kind of limit things so that you're not getting a bunch of junk and a bunch of people clicking on your ads for absolutely no reason, but to be more targeted in your actual ads. Um, then the other thing I would recommend with exact the uh, exact match in particular is definitely do one for the eye doctor near me, like we talked about, or optometrist mm -hmm. near me. Then the other big ones that I see time and time again, no matter where you live in the country, is eye doctor, Columbia, Missouri, uh, optometrist, Columbia, Missouri, uh, just uh, eyeglasses, Columbia, Missouri. So a lot of the different phrases that you're going to hear from your patients in your hometown or in your area are going to be great for your click through rate so that you're only targeting people that are very, very specific and you're not throwing a lot of money down the drain too. Okay. Makes sense. And then finally, I know we, went, we just went over a lot, but uh, any other pitfalls to avoid when it comes to web design or social media? Yeah. If, you know, for social media, the, the one thing that I've heard time and time again is that it's better to claim your page and to not use them than to not claim them at all. And there's kind of a discrepancy in, in the field about that. Um, mm -hmm. I would say, you know, what I would recommend doing is claim your Facebook page, uh, claim your, uh, uh, the one thing we hadn't actually talked about, let me kind of take a step back, is Google mm -hmm. My Business. Um, I, I can't believe I didn't even talk about this earlier. For your practice, if you do not have a Google My Business page, when you're, when you're done on the podcast here, get on there right now and claim that page because that is going to be one of the biggest things that you can possibly do to help your practice rank higher in SEO, especially for local practices. Um, Google My Business is a free listing. You go on there and you basically say, hey, this is my business. This is my location, my name, address, phone number. Those are going to be very important criteria to know all throughout the websites as well as through the Google search engines to make sure that everything is consistent. So when you talk about local SEO, a Google My Business page is huge. Uh, on that Google My Business page, you're going to be able to kind of put photos of your practice. 
You can change your hours on there. You can uh, answer uh, FAQs. And probably most importantly is that you can address reviews. So when people go on to your Google My Business page and they review you and you say, hey, Dr. Smith had the best eye exam in the world. You know, everyone needs to go to him. It's great for your uh, local SEO. And it's even better when you respond to him and say, hey, thanks a lot. Please refer your friends to come see us. We'd love to have you. So that's just a side note. I completely forgot to talk about that earlier. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so yeah, claim, claim your Facebook pages, claim your Twitter pages, your Instagram pages. And what the websites like to see is just post on there periodically, two or three times a week. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. You know, there are a lot of people that say you need to post three or four times a day. And that's way overkill. You know, personally, I know whenever I go see on Facebook and I see somebody posting something over and over and over, you know, if it's not something I care about, guess what? I'm not going to pay attention. I'm going to probably unfollow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, overall, it's one of those things where I would post your post something two or three times a week. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy, but just something that kind of engages your user. Say, hey, today we're talking about macular degeneration. Get an exam from us and we'd be happy to check you out and so forth. Okay. Great. And yeah, why don't you tell us a little bit about your company now, what you guys do and how you're working to help eye doctors. Yeah, sure. So, you know, ultimately when I first started, I uh, created Como Web Designs, which is a local company predominantly. And I did it with the intent of, I wanted to just do cheap web design for anybody in town to make it really easy for everybody. And I quickly realized I was spending a lot of time and not making a lot of money doing it. It wasn't really beneficial. So, you know, from there, I kind of said, you know what, I, let me kind of concentrate more on optometrists because that's, that's obviously my, my niche. And mm -hmm. what we really kind of, uh, what we really just exploded on is our SEO work. You know, obviously I'm talking about that a lot tonight because that's something I'm, I'm pretty good at and I know. And what we've been able to do is we use a lot of different building programs. We have a lot of different software that's our, at our disposal to help get your SEO much higher for your practices. Um, but, you know, so I basically have two companies. One's kind of more for local, local stuff around Columbia, Missouri, where I live. And then the other is Ignite Medical, which I market more so for medical professionals and optometrists and so forth throughout the country. Um, with Ignite Medical, that's really more websites, uh, SEO, local SEO, which is kind of a little, little bit of a different beast than organic SEO. Uh, and then we also do a lot of AdWords or Google ads for people across the country to really help kind of get more patients in their practice today because the results with Google ads are amazing if you can do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, great. Yeah. Got a couple of comments here. Uh, uh, Dot gave the peace sign and Stephen Shaw said Dick Zimbalist is awesome. Great topic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very All much. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and how can uh, people get in contact with you if they're interested in working with Ignite? So yeah, if you just go to Ignite Medical, uh, you put that in Google and hopefully it comes right up if I'm not, if I'm doing my job properly. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the funny thing is I actually haven't spent that much time doing SEO for my own websites because I've been so busy yeah. doing Exactly. Uh, You're doing a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, really, you know, if you go to ignitemedicalcode.com, that's my URL. Uh, we have okay. contact information on there. Um, you got, you can reach me at any time. My uh, number is 573-340-3359. So, uh, you know, you can reach me on my, uh, my phone that way. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we offer on our website are uh, free complimentary keyword analyses. So if you go on to my website and you say, hey, let me see how my rankings are doing for my website, we'll go in there and we'll pull up an exact list of all your keywords, where you're ranking, what your essential click through rate are and so forth. Um, the one thing I want to just actually tell people about, too, is, is that if you want to do some of this on your own, there's a really good website out there called Uber Suggest. It's like U B E R Suggest, and okay. it's run by a guy named Neil Patel, who's like a guru for WordPress and so forth. And it's just a really easy, clean website where you go in there, you type your domain, and you can find out about your uh, your actual analytics for visitors every month, your keywords, uh, where you rank compared to competitors, and so forth. So mm -hmm. it's a great free resource to kind of go and do some of this stuff on your own as well. Okay, and that was ubersuggest.com. Ubersuggest, yeah. All right, great. Yeah. Anything else you want to add or anything we didn't go over yet? I don't think so. Uh, anything else that you can think of offhand? That is, that's all the questions I had on my, my outlines. So. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah, if anyone has any questions, you know, feel free to email me. Um, the information is right on our website again uh, at Ignite Medical. I'm happy to answer any questions or give some recommendations. Um, if anyone needs a website or some SEO work, please reach out. We'd be happy to help you. Great. Yeah. And then Richard's a member of Odie's on finance. So if you post a question, I'm sure you'll jump on and answer it. If it's related to SEO or websites, we'll, we'll tag you make sure that you get on there. Sounds great. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks for coming on tonight.